Hey guys, we are live and welcome to the stream. So there's a few people in the waiting room and I know you guys are waiting to see James Tusk, who is the man of the moment. He has been held up. He is in Colombia, somewhere in Colombia, an undisclosed location, and he's been held up, but he will be joining us very shortly. He's assured me he is safe. Okay. He may have been attacked by the Matrix. The Matrix may be coming to get him, but he is physically safe at the moment. And he will be joining us on stream in a bit. But obviously, everyone's been waiting for a while. So I thought we might as well kick off and get this thing going anyway. Um, how's everyone doing? I hope everyone's well. I hope everyone's having a great day. Um, we had a problem yesterday because the Edge 3, the um, the sales page for the Edge 3, we had a problem with the URL. Okay, We've now managed to sort that. We've got a new URL that we can use for um for you guys to to enroll so you want to go and have a look at the um you want to go and have a look at the sales page i mean you don't obviously you know you go on the sales page you don't have to you don't have to buy it or whatever if you don't want to but at least go on there and have a look at the um the information about the course because i think you're going to find it very interesting and this is basically as i said yesterday you know this is basically why james has been taken down i there's been Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so there's been some, you know, sort of um, skepticism, let's say, from some quarters about what's happened here and about whether or not this is a matrix attack. And I, I respect that because, listen, as I've said before, I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not a tinfoil hat wearer. I tend to think all of that stuff's a load of bollocks. I think that Alex Jones would be better off eating less fucking carbs and eating less sugar and drinking less beer and probably concentrating on his BMI more than the fucking nonsense that he bangs on about all the time on the internet. However, we are in a situation where Tusk and Lairs didn't have any strikes against their channel. All right. They didn't have any strikes at all against their channel. And they just started to upload the content regarding the edge, okay, which is a program about masculinity, about dating, about hormone optimization, about becoming the warrior version of yourself, the primal bar bar barbarian, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all that good stuff. And then overnight, the channel gets deleted. Okay, so you tell me what you think the answer is, you tell me what you think the obvious conclusion from that is. I mean, it, you know, as I say, there's so much stuff on the internet that I just think is absolutely batshit, okay? There's so much stuff under the banner of, you know, conspiratorial information and everything that I think is complete. Just, just people are just fucking, their brains are being melted, okay? Um, but in this case, it would seem to be the only logical explanation because it's only when and, and and listen tusk has uploaded loads of stuff over the years i mean loads of loads of nonsense over the years referencing you know narcotics referencing partying referencing different substances and activities and illicit you know all this kind of stuff and it's never been a problem you know he's never even had a slap on the wrist on this channel he got his last channel deleted but that was for something else this channel's been absolutely fine and suddenly you start talking about masculinity, you start talking about male self-improvement, you start talking about how to level up, you start talking about how to become the best version of yourself, suddenly the channel gets nuked. It just seems a bit fishy, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I mean, am I going nuts? I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, tell, you tell me. I, to me, it seems a little bit fishy. And it would seem a little bit fishy even if there wasn't previous for this, even if there was no precedent for this. But of course, there is a precedent for this. There are loads of precedents for this. We know the people who operate in this space, you know, loosely the manosphere or men's self-development or whatever you want to call it. We know the high profile figures who operate in this area, who have been cancelled, who are promulgating a similar message. OK, so not only do we have the sort of the coincidence of like, well, why did this happen? Um at this particular point when he uploaded those particular videos. But on top of that, we have the evidence of the precedent that appears to have been set in this particular area. So 
those two things coupled would suggest that something unusual has happened here. Now, again, I don't know. I can't confirm it. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I think most conspiracy theorists really should be, you know, sorting out, probably sorting out their testosterone and getting out of the fucking house and touching some grass, you know, because most of them are fucking idiots who are using conspiracy theories as a way to avoid having to take responsibility in their, in their own lives. Okay. And this is why, you know, we get people who are banging on about, you know, immigration and it was better off in the old days and all that kind of bollocks because they want to blame other people for their own failures. All right. And this is why we've got people who are blaming secret cabals and all this kind of stuff, because they can't handle the fact that they're fucking up in their own lives. And actually, it's their fault. So they want to blame this other group of people over here. All right. All of that stuff. Fucking nonsense. We know it's fucking nonsense. In this case, though, if you talk about and we've seen this so many times, we've seen so many examples of this, haven't we? Haven't we? We've seen so many examples of people talking about masculinity, putting their head above the parapet, and suddenly the powers that be from some angle will come in there, bang, they're gone, okay? You tell me what the answer is. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not clever enough to know, but you tell me what the answer is because it does seem kind of unusual. So that's why we want you guys to at least have a look at the material that we've got on offer here in The Edge because, look, I mean, the point is... Um, and, and, and putting the cancellation to one side and all that kind of stuff. This is a really fucking good program, right? I mean, we've run this program twice now. This is obviously the third outing. And um, we've really refined it. And what we started out as, as doing with this thing was we wanted to create <clears throat> um, a course basically teaching, you know, the dark triad stuff. We wanted to teach the bad boy stuff because... Here's the thing, right? So I've been coaching for quite a long time now. James, obviously coaching a long time as well. We get guys who come onto the boot camps, onto the courses, and they're nice guys. They're well presented. Often they are decent looking. Often they're in reasonable shape. Maybe they've got a bit of money. I mean, fuck knows they have to, to afford Tusk's prices, right? They've got a bit of money. Maybe they're quite well dressed, all right? So what is the fucking problem? Well, the problem is fundamentally they're boring, usually. They're a bit autistic. They're a bit in their head, and they're too fucking nice, okay? And they don't communicate sexuality and those two things kind of go hand in hand because the reason that people don't own their sexuality remember mr torero r.i.p would talk about don't hide your dick okay why do people do that why do they hide their dick well they do it because they're afraid of offending people around them they're afraid of offending the woman they're also afraid of rejection by the way as well because if you don't hide your dick and you're open and you're ex happy to express your sexuality with her, then you you put yourself at risk of being rejected and you put yourself at risk of sexual rejection. And the nice guy or the guy who is not the dominant, you know, no fucks given alpha is very concerned about that because he is overly concerned about what other people think of him. That is to say, he is too empathetic. Okay. He cares too much about what she thinks. We need to dial down the empathy. That's not being an oaf and just, you know, charging around like a bull in a china shop. But it is about thinking, OK, well, how do I put myself first in this situation? How do I prioritize my own desires? You know, what I'm actually looking for here over and above what these other people over here who are kind of randoms and I'm probably never going to see them again anyway, might think of me. And that's the fucking important thing, you know, and um most guys that we coach, they're not doing that. Now, I will often get criticism on Twitter and stuff. People say, oh, you know, you coaches, you dating roaches, you're a bunch of fucking charlatans. And they'll be banging on about all that stuff. And the argument they'll be making is, well, you're preying on these desperate incels who are getting no tail and they're so ugly and there was there was never, ever going to be any, any chance for these guys. And you guys are just, are just conning them, which is obviously absolute nonsense because... The reality of the matter is, um, as I said yesterday, I can't really think of a time when I've ever had an, a male client who was so physically unattractive that he couldn't pull anybody. It just literally never happens. The reality is most people are kind of average. OK, most dudes, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of mid. They're somewhere in the middle. Then the, you, we get some guys who are very good looking who come on our programs and we get a few guys who are sort of below average, but they're still not that fucking bad. I mean, we've never had a Quasimodo who's turned up you know, to try and get coaching. And we've had to say, listen, man, you're just too ugly. It's just, it just never happens. Okay. Because, because th those people are the extreme outliers. So the point is that 
what's going wrong for these guys is not to do with the, with their aesthetic or the way that they look or, or or the way that they physically present themselves. I mean, they can probably help need some help with their dress sense and stuff. But overall, it's the manner in which they are putting themselves forward in these interactions. Okay, it's the manner in which they are presenting themselves in front of the girl. It's the manner in which they are relating to the woman in front of them. Okay, most guys are getting it wrong. All right, even guys that study game because guys that study game tend to study technique okay they study lines they study routines they, they they watch old videos of people and listen to the lines that they use and parrot those lines and they think that's what this is about they think that's the answer and it isn't the answer okay it might be training wheels it might be good because it gives you something to say in those awkward first couple of minutes and you don't quite know what to say and and great okay i'll just nick those, these lines from tom torero from 10 years ago but that's not what's going to carry the day. What's going to carry the day in the end is the vibe that you have and the way that you make her feel. And a way to distill that, a way to sort of simplify that and bring that down into something that's manageable is why we talk about edge. Because what we're talking about is having edge, okay? And, and that is essentially being that archetypal guy who has that kind of masculinity dialed up, who's in... in you know, not enthralled to his sexuality, but he is comfortable with his sexual nature, okay? He's not trying to hide it. He's not trying to pretend to be someone he's not. He's happy to just let that forth, okay? And let the chips fall where they may. He's not overly empathetic. So he doesn't really, he doesn't really care that much what she thinks, all right? She may tell him to fuck off, okay? Or she might fall in love with him and immediately move, run away to Paris with him, okay? He doesn't know, but he also doesn't particularly care because he's not that invested and he's not that bothered about what some individual person thinks of him. He's also not bothered, by the way, about the bystanders. There might be people standing around, et cetera, et cetera. He doesn't care about that either. He doesn't give a monkeys because he's so focused on his own purpose and what he wants to achieve that that is the main thing that he's concerned with, okay? This is where we need to get you guys. Too many guys who come forward to us have seen a few videos, they've learned a few techniques, they've done some role playing or whatever the fuck. You know, they've read some textbooks and they think that just by reciting the lines, that's going to get them where they need to be. And it really fucking isn't, okay? It really isn't because this is about attitude and it's about vibe and it's about emotion. It's about creating emotion, okay? Most people, most guys are not capable of doing that. And partly, partly, and this is coming back to the whole original topic of this conversation, one of the reasons for that is because masculinity is being suppressed, okay? Masculinity is not welcome anymore in the mainstream in the West, okay? It's not liked. There's a problem with it, right? The pe the powers that be, the elites, whatever you want to call it, they have a problem with it, okay? And they would rather not see this kind of message being put out there, which is why everybody gets shut down all the time, which is why, you know, we've seen the case in Romania, which is why we've seen, um, you know, Fresh and Fit get demonetized. It's why we've seen Pearl get demonetized recently, okay? I mean, it, it, they're not exactly fucking hiding it, are they? You know, they're not exactly hiding it. It's pretty fucking clear what's going on out there. And now, suddenly, on the on the uh, on the the eve of promoting this course, now Tusk's channel is deleted. Okay, I mean, come on, cause and fucking effect, right? I mean, you know, it, like I don't know, man. I mean, there are patterns, aren't there? There are patterns there. And uh, as I say, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I think it's a load of bollocks. I think you guys, you buy into this shit. And I know some of you in this fucking chat buy into some of this other shit that I think is absolutely ridiculous, okay? Um, I think a lot of that stuff's bollocks. But in a, in, a, in a specific situation like this, you have to look at cause and effect and you have to look at precedent, okay? And I think it's pretty fucking clear. Anyway, I'm going to drink some Diet Coke. If anyone's got any questions, um, put them on into the chat. Um, James should be with us soon. Um, I think he's trying to get into his Airbnb, but maybe the Matrix is, you know, maybe the Matrix is kind of fucked with his Airbnb. I mean, who knows? Um, think about that. You're asking us to pay a cocaine head, lol. Well, I mean, what does that even really fucking mean? I mean, Sigmund Freud was a cocaine head and, you know one of the most famous figures of the 20th century. So what are we saying here? I mean, the reality is, it's not about 
whether somebody does coke or not. I mean, that's kind of fucking irrelevant, isn't it? It's about the value of their work and what they bring to the table in terms of their content, if we're talking about it in, in this space, right? Um, I personally couldn't give a flying fuck if somebody does cocaine, if they're giving good information and they're entertaining and they bring value and they help me in my life, I'm going to listen to them, okay? And actually, you know, the fact that this guy said that, this Gulliver's nutsack or whatever he's called, is kind of indicative. I mean, this is the kind of attitude, this is the kind of attitude that is why guys are not getting laid, okay? Because if you are, you know, and, and, and listen, I'm sober. I've been sober for 22 years. I don't do drugs. I don't drink. You know, I don't smoke. I was smoking a little bit last year, but I've stopped that again. You know, I'm pretty fucking whiter than white. I don't really do any of this stuff. But if you're criticizing somebody because they do coke, then you're probably a bit of a sheltered fucking character. You're probably a bit boring. You're probably judgmental. You're probably a bit staged. You're probably a bit um, straight laced. You probably don't take risk. You probably don't take a think outside of the box. And women probably don't want to have sex with you as a result of all of those things. Now, I'm not saying for one second that people should, oh, right, okay, so now I'm going to bang a load of cocaine because that's what women want. Obviously, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that we need to get off our judgmental fucking high horses and stop being fucking prigs, as the Victorians used to say, and um, live a little, okay? This is why you fuckers aren't getting laid. Jesus Christ. Um, Tusk pissed off the wrong people, that's what I think. Quite possibly, quite possibly. Um, incels infiltrating the chat. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, come on, just fucking. Tusk couldn't even bother to turn up to his own stream. Well, you know, that's a very uncharitable way of putting it, Mr. GS. I mean, I, I, it would be nicer if you said, I hope that Tusk is all right, okay? Under these circumstances, you know, it's a fairly shady thing that's happened. I hope the guy's all right. You know, if you think it's kind of cool to write, oh, he couldn't even be bothered to turn up to his own stream, you know, that doesn't suggest much about you in terms of your character or caliber as a, as a, as a, as a man, I would suggest. I mean, surely a more, you know, a nicer interpretation, a more charitable uh, observation would be, well, shit, I hope the dude's all right. What the fuck's going on? Seems like you're passive on drugs. The way a person lives their overall speaks volume. I don't, yeah, I don't know what you mean by that, really. I'm not, what do you mean passive on it? Maybe it was Thomas. Anybody feel like they're at school being told? So basically, I mean, I'm not passive on drugs. Personally, I'm not passive on drugs. I don't fucking take drugs, okay? I stopped taking drugs over two decades ago. I don't do that shit, all right? I don't drink. I don't do any of that bullshit. I go to bed at 9 p.m. most nights, except tonight, and listen to the fucking radio and have a cup of chamomile tea. That's how hardcore it gets. But if somebody chooses to do drugs, I've got no fucking problem with that. Why should I? What does it matter to me? All that matters to me, and again, this is the thing, mental point of origin. OK, guys, mental fucking point of origin. Think about Rollo Tomasi, the godfather of the manosphere. What would he say about this? What is your mental point of origin? You want to find out information about dating. You want to find out information about how to get higher quality women. Is James Tusk, exhibit A, is James Tusk a man who is able to give you that information? Can he give you that skill set? Yes, he can. Therefore... Does it matter if he does cocaine or, or any other drug? No, of course he fucking does. Who, who gives a fuck? What, what fucking planet are you people on? Jesus Christ. Um, is it true you date trans girls? No, it's not true. I date trans girls. You were on here yesterday, you stupid twat. You seem strangely obsessed with the transsexual community. No shame there. We don't hate on the transsexual community. But I don't know why you're so obsessed with it. So I'm going to block you. But perhaps... You need to have a look at your own orientation and maybe there's some things that you should figure out here because I want you to be happy, Mr. Blocked Fucker, whoever you are. And um, it seems like because of your obsession with that subject matter in particular, you know, you keep coming back here night after night and asking me about it. And I've already told you the answer. It seems like it might be a preoccupation of yours. OK, you know what they say when there's a finger pointing at you or when you point the finger, there's three fingers pointing back at you. OK, so I would meditate on that, Mr. Blocked person. And maybe seek some help or maybe just seek to, you know, there's they're, they're surgery you can get these days. OK, you don't need to suffer in pain. All right. You can you can be you can be free. All right. I would encourage you if that's what you want to do, if you want to sleep with people, you know, of different genders. OK, I would encourage you to do that. That's absolutely fine. Uh, going to bed at 9 p.m. every day. 
is great for increasing testosterone levels. Yeah. Uh, would it be wise for a 20 year old kid to look up to the likes of Tusk? I'm supposed to look up to the guy for life advice. Um, I, I mean, I think personally, I think that um, people who are comfortable talking about their flaws and talk about, you know, the, the, the difficulties that they've been through, as well as the positive stuff. I think those people are actually the most inspirational of all, to be honest. I mean, those are the people that I really look up to. I mean, I love Chris Williamson. I think Chris Williamson is a great presenter. I think he's cool. But he's so squeaky clean, isn't he? There doesn't seem to be any chink in the armor. There doesn't seem to be any any flaws there at all. Has he been through? I mean, he has been through some hardship, actually. I think he's talked about actually some stuff in his childhood. But I mean, it it, it just seems all a little bit too too clean and and correct. I think actually people who are 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 going through different things and they're living through it, but they're actually sharing their experience, strength, and hope as a part of that, as a part of that journey. I actually think those are the most the people that we can learn the most from. OK, and the, the whole thing about role models, the notion of role models is a little bit immature, to, to be honest. I don't think we should have role models in the in the, the public sphere. Right. A role model might be your father. It might be your mother. OK, I don't think it should be somebody on the Internet. I don't think it should be a musical artist. I don't think it should be a film star. All right. A celebrity of any kind. Right. It might be somebody in your fa in your family. That's about it. We don't need role, like, you, you know, you don't need role models. Your family should be fulfilling that role. What you need or what your, you know, your your 20 year old kid or a 20 year old kid needs is firstly to have his family. And secondly, you know, to make up his own mind about stuff. I mean, you can't just blindly follow somebody who's on the Internet um, or somebody who's a, who's a, you know, like a celebrity or a musical artist or any of that kind of stuff. Right. You know, this should be coming from your own family and you should be using your own discernment. All right. I mean, the notion that everybody in, in any sort of public life has to be completely squeaky clean. I think is naive and I think it's misguided, quite frankly. The edge thing seems to be falling like a, like a lead zeppelin. Well, no, it's actually um, it's actually almost full. And the boot camp, all right, that we're doing in April, which is going to be in Bogota in Colombia, is going to sell out very soon. OK, so it's between the 4th and the 7th of April in Bogota, Colombia. OK, we're going to be taking on a few guys. We've sold I think there's like one or two places left now. We've sold most of the places and we have got extra trainers in. So it's going to be a bigger boot camp. If you want to join that, you do need to join the edge itself. OK, so the edge is a 10 week online program where we take you through all aspects of, you know, masculinity and how to level up and all of these different things, how to improve your dating skills. OK, we talk about hormone optimization. We talk about social freedom. We talk about, you know, the specifics of game itself. We will set you weekly tasks to do in order to, um, you know, in, in order to give you motivation and accountability. OK, but you need to be in that digital course and then you can come on the boot camp, which is on the 4th to the 7th of April. OK, so if you're interested in that coming out to Colombia with us, then you will absolutely need to be in the course. And the other thing as well um that i should mention is that we will be doing live webinars throughout the course um twice a week okay twice a week maybe three times a week on some weeks and we're going to be getting different experts in to talk about different aspects of all of the above mentioned facets of modern life and masculinity so it's going to be very powerful uh we ran it a few months ago and we did a boot camp again in Bogota, in Colombia. And there's some great testimonials from uh, the students uh, who are on that. So if you go, and again, I'm going to put the link in the chat, but if you go over to the, the sales page to have a look at this, you'll be able to see some of the testimonials that we've got. And uh, we're going to be uploading more soon. And um, yeah, these guys are, are pretty happy. These guys are pretty happy with... Uh, with what went down. So I think what we wanted really was, it's, it's a very holistic sort of approach. It's a very holistic course. Um, it covers all bases because a lot of the old game stuff, you know, it really only covers like verbal game. It covers verbal game and it covers, um, you know, over sort of the, the basic London day game model, all that kind of thing, which is great, which is fine. But, you know, nowadays, 2024, in the in the realm of Instagram, in the realm of you know all of social media and connectivity and the smartphone, and everything else, we need to have more than that. Okay, we need to be operating 
fully at full capacity in all aspects of our presentation. Um, right, so we've got some comments about different things here. And I think the fact that we're normalizing substance intake is very telling. We're not normalizing at all. What a fucking stupid thing to say. And now, without further ado, Mr. Tusk. Hello. Nearly. Let's try again. It's black. Why is it black? It's pitch black. I can see, I can see you behind the thing. Tusk should be coming in. I don't really know. Ah, here he is. Hello? I mean, look at that, man. If that is not the Matrix, if that's not the Matrix that, that's frozen up his camera and frozen up that image, I don't know what. I mean, that is the Matrix in full effect right there. We're seeing it in front of our eyes, guys. Why do you hate the Northern Day Game community? I don't. It's just a joke. Fucking hell. Troy has a calling as a barrister. Great debater. Thank you. Um, yeah, I agree with Williamson. He seems nice, but no edge. I find him wormy. How's Tusk? Matri Matrix attacks. Okay, so hello. Bonjour. How's things? Not bad. How are you doing? You all right? I'm very good, apart from missing... Missing my flight to Venezuela was a was a ball ache, but I'm going to go on Wednesday instead, so it's all gravy. What a disaster! K horror, but uh, it's good to be back on some sort of platform, albeit temporarily. Yeah. But you um, are you are you are speaking to us from? Well, I guess. Well, I guess you. I don't know. You've been attacked by the Matrix, so I guess you're sort of outside the Matrix. But like, are you in some like dystopian, like in Family Guy, when he goes into that that weird thing and it's just all grey because you've been thrown off the internet? Is that what it's like? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I think people are surprised I wasn't more pissed off by it, but I'm genuinely not. I was the, the old channel. Um, you know, I wanted to do some things differently, and I think. YouTube, it's almost a blessing in disguise, right? And, and when you compare this stuff to like, you know, what's happening around the world, you know, women being called up to the front line in Ukraine, it's just such mm -hmm. a, a occurrence, right? The message we're putting out is going to continue. Um, the obvious thing that is concerning is the fact that some of the stuff that was going to go into the Edge 3, so um, that were private videos, YouTube saw those. I don't know how they see them. And they automatically just terminated the channel, right? Yeah. So I think they are looking for ways to to pin down and stop channels like ours, which try and give advice in the Anglosphere to men to try and self-actualize, right? So that's the really concerning thing. I think there's a few things to clear up as well in terms of misconception. So hmm. first, this isn't a fucking marketing ploy, right? I've put I've put blood, sweat, beers, and tears as have as has led the last eight years in building this YouTube channel. We've got shadow ban years back. That's why the growth, in my opinion, has been so slow. Um, and it's absolutely not a ploy to try and sell the Edge course. The Edge course, we were always going to release the Edge 3 anyway. Yeah. Um, but now we can't promote it on YouTube, hence why you're promoting it. But this isn't well, something like private or privatize my channel that comes back again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be so, good if it was. It'd be good if it was really. Well, th this guy here, GS, says, if the Matrix attacks James because of the Edge's launching, why haven't they taken down your channel? Well, the thing is, because James had uploaded videos, which I haven't uploaded yet to my channel. That's they, the are, they, are slightly, they are slightly racy. You know, some of the Edge content is pushing the boundaries. And the, the wokosphere, the Anglosphere, don't, don't, like the, uh, don't like the sound of it, right? But what we really try to do in the Edge 3 is do what other people are not doing mm. in the game space, right? Which is... Gone are the days of being this, you know, Torero esque. Money is a, an indication of, of lower value routines. Mm. It's all about building yourself up to be holistically the best you can across all areas, right? So the finances, the fitness, the living an interesting reality, hormone optimization, getting rid of sexual shame. And so the Edge course is a refinement of everything that we've had to go through, myself, Troy, and Les, over 20 years 
combined, in, combined into a 10 week course, right? And we're, we're deliberately pricing it like five, seven, nine pounds um, because we want this stuff to be accessible. This isn't some sort of marketing trick of me taking down the channel, sell more spaces. Trust me, it'd be far more fucking effective for me to have a subscribe account of 30,000 people I can pump this out to rather than fucking zero. So whichever fucking morons are saying that is, you know, you fucking yeah. just get on. The other thing yeah, is loads of people, I've, I've realized how, how much people don't want to fucking improve this stuff. Like I've got, to be fair, like really nice messages from loads of guys being, oh, I'm so sorry your content's been, been taken down. Uh, mm. I've been following you for years. And I'm like, cool, man, no problem at all. Ev, ev, all assimilation of all the knowledge from 25 years combined with Les and, and Troy is in the course, The Edge. Why don't you get yeah. that? It's 579. And they're like, oh, well, you know, it's kind of, um, my life's kind of sourced in this area. And then what I say to them is, right, show me the, show me the women you're currently banging. And a lot mm. of them get really angry and just go away. So that's a sign that they're, they're not doing anything. Or I say, how many approaches have you done in the last three weeks? And then they go offline or they say three. Uh, or I say, show me a photo of yourself. Show me a uh, how much money are you earning? Like, what do you look like? Blah, blah, blah. And they go offline, right? So there's yeah. a lot of fucking wallflowers here that love following the fucking content. But when push comes to shove, um, they're not willing to do the work, right? And what we're trying to do is we're trying to live this lifestyle where, look, we've got, especially me, I've got so many fucking flaws, right? Hedonistic tendencies. I can be awkward as fuck sometimes. Um, it just uh, all sorts of drug addictions going on. But what I try and do is I try and constantly every day, day self-actualize and, and, and self-master become that man I want to be, right? Yeah. And so we try and put out this journey. Um, and we try and be as vulnerable and honest as, as possible with people with that. We're not superhuman, but we are trying to get better. And I think a lot of guys, what they want to do is they want to, they don't want to put in the work. They don't want to try and get better. They want to sit there, theorize their way to victory. It doesn't fucking work, right? You're going to live one, one, uh, one life. There's a great quote that popped up on my, uh, Memento Mori app just now, which I, I thought was brilliant, which is when you look at a corpse, you can always sense your own breath better. And it's true, like, right, you've got a certain number of heartbeats, certain number of breaths, and then that's it, sayonara forever, right? Yeah, So true. why yeah. people sit there, victim me up, complaining? If you can't afford the Edge 3, you're a fucking moron, right? If you can't, the, the way society has always worked, the way the, the, the average age of our viewers is 35. If you can't afford to pay five, seven, nine pounds, you've got serious fucking issues, right? If you watch the content, you obviously resonate with us, you trust us buy the fucking edge course. And yes, it will help us out. We're content creators. I put out, me and Les put out thousands and thousands of videos for fucking free of us charging around the streets and getting a lot of rejection, getting some success, right? And then mm. people sit there having the gumption to say, oh, Tusk, you were scammy. You're charging for a course. Fuck the lot of you. <laughs> Fuck the lot of you. Like with your fucking victim mentality, you sit there with your fucking Cheerios jerking off to some fat bird on, online, right? And tell me you're happy. You're not, right? So this is a kick up the ass, like to people. Just get the fuck on with it, right? Yeah. One thing yeah. is gone. It's not a plan. That's it, right? Whether me and Les launch another channel is to be seen. Maybe I'll just go and fucking do something else. Maybe I'll move to Venezuela and become a coke dealer. Who knows? But if you resonate with our material, we've compiled it all into the edge. Luckily, before I got taken down, so it's all there. Myself, Troy, and Les giving you actionable the keys to the kingdom. You know, the real fundamental pillars, the, the, the biohacking of the hormones, the sexual shame mastery with Bonaparte. Dave Lee, one of the world's leading experts managing the hormones. Bonaparte managing the sexual shame stuff. Myself, Troy and Les, gamifying you t remote approach tasks to turn you into that social animal. Social freedom plus social intelligence, you know. And then at the same time, maxing out your fashion, your fitness, all this other stuff. If you do this course, you can't. You won't, there's no way you won't be in a better position than beforehand. And if you actually break it down again, guys going, oh, 579 pounds is so expensive. You break that, that fucking time per hour because you have constant 24 seven WhatsApp support from me, Troy and Les individually, as well as a group. If you break down 10 weeks in hours and divide that by 579 pounds, we're getting paid less than the fucking disabled kids who work in the Sierra Leone blood diamond mines. So exactly. don't sit there going, we're making loads of money. We're fucking not. We're doing this shit because we're, we're, we're passionate at what we do, we're passionate about our own self actualization journey, and we're trying to pass on what we know and, and save you most valuable asset time because you don't have to make all the mistakes we've made. That's the point of getting a coach. We've done all the fucking time investment, and then we give you the keys to the kingdom to make your path as smooth and painless as possible. And if people don't understand that or you're offended by that, fuck off. 
And I would say unsubscribe to my channel, but you can't do that. But unsubscribe yeah. mentally to me if you think that's a bad deal for anyone. And then just to, just to top it off the end of the monologue, for those of you that do like to push the boundaries, that would like to come and see the delights of dating overseas outside the fucking Anglosphere with all its feminism, Bogota, April 4th to the 7th of October, anything goes bootcamp. We teach you grey area dating apps. We teach you night game, day game. This is a place that me and Troy know like the back of our proverbial nutsacks. We've been coming here for a total of around five years. We know all the best clubs, bars, restaurants, day game spots. Um, it's it, We bought a number of guys here about three months ago, 20 dudes, and they had a blinder. Guys were getting laid three or four times a week that don't pull a muscle in the US. That's how sexualized the dating market is. That's how valuable a proposition you are being in Bogota. Yeah, I mean, it's fucking, off the, it's fucking through the roof, uh, Colombia, Bogota. I mean, it's just one of the most incredible places. Beautiful girls. Super social. They love to meet guys. They love to meet guys from the Anglosphere. Um, they are, you know, just very keen to mingle. It's, an, it's just a paradise, really, for, for dudes. So this guy says, expand more on Edge 3. Will there be an opportunity to meet up with guys on Edge Course in London and go cold or press? Yes, absolutely. As part of the course, the Edge Course, again, this is a chargeable thing, I, which is ridiculously low. I offer something called Wing Finder, which is uh, there's around. I've got around eleven thousand contacts of guys who've either been coached by me or coached by my coaches, or have got in touch looking for other guys. Um, you pay a one-time fee for that of two hundred and seventy-nine pounds. You get a free strategy call. Usually, that's the Wing Finder thing I offer. I'm putting that into the Edge for free. So again, five seven nine pounds for the total Edge course. You've got world's leading experts across different areas. You've got myself, Troy, and Les on call twenty four seven. You've got Zoom calls, and then you've got access for life to the wing finder stuff. So you get access to 11,000 dudes around the world. And so you can go out and you can do the reps with people in your particular city. It doesn't have to be London. There's contacts in all of the big cities, New York, Paris, Italy, Rome, Sao Paulo. Um, when I charge around Caracas in a few days, presumably some Caracas uh, facially tattooed drug dealers as well will be on the list if, if that's yours. <laughs> so who knows? There's actually a guy um, who you know, Troy, um, mm. who was on the last... Uh, Edge course, who what was basically wanting to come to Venezuela with me, and he flew today, so he's actually in. Elon oh, really? Is it on his own, shitting himself? Because the reason he wanted me to, he, the reason he came with me in the first place was because he was like, "I don't want to be on my own. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm over exaggeration a bit, but he really didn't want to be on his own in Venezuela, right? We've all heard the horror stories, and the irony is he's sitting in Venezuela now." And I'm asking him how Venezuela is. Well, but, has he said he's, he's all right so far, though? Presumably nothing's... No, he's already been knifed. Uh, he's oh, lost, an eye, lost an eye, lost a dark sack. But apart from that, he's fine. These things happen, man. So this is a good one. Slick Flick says, uh, Tusk, you've been an inspiration to me. I've met some incredible women because of your channel. Please, can you give me an idea of what your plans are now in terms of content? Well, mainly, I mean, content on my own mobile phone will be go to Caracas, pick up a load of focaine, bang a load of hookers. Um, in terms of public <laughs> stuff, I, I'm, I'm not sure. But look, again, with everyone, this isn't some sob story to like, oh, Tusk is now going to be homeless, you know, walking around the streets, which may be the case, but it's not a sob story based around that. If you've resonated with the fact that myself and Les have put out literally tens of thousands of hours of content for free to inspire guys to get out of the house, that was always the plan, right? If you've taken any value from that and you want to give back, then please buy the edge. It's only 579 pounds. And if you think I've done you, if you think my time and the, the content you've watched and the input I've probably given to you guys over WhatsApp is worth that amount of money, get on the edge. A, because it will help me, so you're giving something back, but B, because it is actually the best thing we've ever produced. Myself, yes. we've got it dialed in. So, well, this is what we were saying before before this whole cancellation stuff and everything. When we were in Warsaw, we were talking about this. This really is genuinely we've we keep using this phrase, the keys to the kingdom. And it kind of sounds like it's a bit cheesy. It's a bit cliche marketing kind of speak. But it, this stuff really is. This is to the best of our knowledge. This is what actually makes the fucking difference in terms of the dating stuff. This 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 combination of things in the edge program this is what actually turns the dial it's not just about learning some stacks from 2012 or learning some clever you know boyfriend response responses or things like this or you know how to text her or six things to say in a coffee shop this is the, the actual stuff that's going to make a fucking difference because as well because obviously we've had a lot of experience i mean you've taught thousands of guys i've taught like loads and loads of dudes all over the place we know what a lot of these students are lacking we know what the problems are and we know the way to solve it 
And that's what's distilled down into this program, right? And that's what's been missing because, look, again, I mean, th this kind of came to fruition, didn't it, when we went to Russia? Yeah. Night, uh, and we were saying the difference between kind of Eastern Eastern European game versus the Anglosphere, right? Anglosphere, mm. some like Russell Brand, you know, doing his, you know, with his fucking, you know, birds in his hair and very feminized energy. Not saying he's not alpha, but very different mm. verbal bantering game, you know. Um, he wouldn't last two minutes in the Russian nightclub we're in. There were some hard ass yeah. motherfuckers with cauliflower ears who are clearly fighters or fucking gangsters. They had women clustered around them like bees to fucking shit, or like flies to shit, right? Very masculine culture. What's the polar opposite of that? Extreme femininity. Yeah. That dynamic works. Um, I think the reason people like Russell Brand is, and I'm not saying he's not an attractive prospect, but I think the reason it, his game works so well in the Anglo sphere is because you've got this masculinization of women, right? So mm. that energies and the, the gender roles are less defined but in yeah. russian nightclub i guarantee in the in the place in sochi we're at he wouldn't get he wouldn't last two minutes we were saying that probably one of the blokes would have taken him thinking he was a woman and pinned him down and butt fucked him you know and, and then yeah. given him like a, a, a rose or something because it's just a, a totally different thing so what we've noticed and it's no one's fault and it's you know i grew up soft as fuck as well so it's something that i've had to develop but we've we've lack, we lack masculinity, right? In the modern day age, the 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 average dude growing up in the Anglo sphere, you know, from a reasonable home, who's not a complete, you know, pauper, they're just fucking soft. Gone are the days where to be masculine, you 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 went into battle with a fucking axe and hacked off. You had to to get laid. You had to have four heads strung around, four shrunken heads strung around here to get any pussy. If you had three, it wasn't good enough. Two, you didn't even get let into the bar to drink. You know, now. The test of masculinity is being able to go up to a woman sober and say hello, right? That shows the state of masculinity is at an all-time low. No yeah. wonder women are disillusioned with men. But the great thing is, gentlemen, if you're willing to re-masculinize yourself, right, through the stuff we teach in the edge, which that's exactly what it is. It's giving you that masculine edge. Guess what happens? You have a limitless options with women because most guys are fucking soft, right? They're fucking yeah. soft. They're out of shape. There's no, they don't respect themselves. There's no self-love. They've got no self-control, no self-discipline. They're fucking broke. <laughs> they can't fight. They've got no verbal dexterity. They haven't weaponized themselves, their minds, their bodies, and their souls, right? They've got nothing to them. How the fuck do you expect to get in the most competitive age of all time for dating? Because we've got a globalization of the, of the dating market. You're competing with every fuck around the world now due to these dating apps. How the fuck... If you're not the most self-actualized masculine version of yourself, do you expect to be banging some hot 21-year-old? Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. So, there's a couple of people pushing back on the there's a couple of people pushing back on the Russell Brand thing. He says he's extremely charismatic and says, Oh, you know, he's one of the best natural show off states alone. He pulls the guy has risen. I think that Brand is a bit of a weird case, isn't he? Because I think I think what like I don't I think what you're talking about is the fact he was very flamboyant and there was a sort of there was this kind of effeminate sort of side to him. And, and, and it's more that, I think. I think the reality is Brand probably was, it probably is quite alpha. And, you know, he, he did have some of that aspect to him, even though he was very skinny at the time and he was very sort of flouncy and all the rest of it. But he's kind of a good placeholder because it's more like the Oscar Wilde thing, isn't it? You know, the guy who's very good with a, he's funny and he's good with a quip and he's a bit sort of feminine, but he's not, he's, he's the polar opposite of the sort of the Russian you know, mafia boss kind of, kind of, kind of dude. And what, what we're basically saying is, yes, it worked for Brand, but Brand is a massive outlier. Um, you know, who's now in a lot of trouble, by the way. But that's another thing. But he, you know, Brand is a massive, massive outlier. The reality is, for most dudes that we teach, they're not Russell Brand either. You know, they're not Russell Brand, and they're certainly not the Russian mafia boss, right? So, if you want to lean in any direction, it's going to be easier for for you to lean towards the the more masculine archetype because that's going to get you the most traction the most quickly. 100% agree with that. And that, that's a great nuance you made there. I'm not saying Brand isn't alpha. I'm not saying he didn't get laid like a rock star. He absolutely did because he played his particular feminine, more feminized archetype very well in an Anglosphere world, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'd like to see what he was doing in Russian nightclubs with these kind of, where it is a very clear divide between the masculine and the feminine. I don't think he'd have been as effective. I think he probably still would have got action, right? But if you took away his celebrity status and he was just charging around some of the Russian nightclubs we've been in where it really is the hard main gangsters who look like fucking, you know, they look like piece of granite, right? I don't think he'd be doing the same amount of damage as sitting on a talk show, Morning Joe, holding frame in the Anglosphere. Mm -hmm. 
but I'm yeah, not saying yeah. alpha. But I absolutely agree. For the for ninety percent of dudes, unless you've got this archetype, this Johnny Depp, Pirates of the Caribbean, you're an actor, you're flamboyant, you're Shakespearean, you're better off leaning into the avatar we teach in the Edge, which is leaning heavily into masculinity, right? So learning yeah. to getting your testosterone levels on point, getting very lean, getting your fashion sorted, almost having this more James Bond smirk with your eyes, smizing, devil may care vibe, right? That is a far more secure archetype. That's the holding archetype. Frame on, holding frame on loose women. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. I mean, can you imagine if he had an orgy with the, with the birds on loose women, How what the age, the, the combined age count of that would have been? It would have been like 600. Denise Welsh, giving Denise Welsh one from the, from the back. Is she the one with the massive pizza that you wouldn't share your cocaine with, or is that someone yeah, else? Yeah, well, I think so. Yeah, motorboating her would just be that you probably end up drowning, I think. Um, so we got Miguel in the chat, who, Miguel from The Edge 2, who was asking exactly the same question yesterday, and we covered it yesterday, but obviously James is here now. Took The Edge 2 a few months ago. Is it worth to take The Edge 3? Are there any differences between them? Well, yes, there are, because the, like we said yesterday, the webinars are going to be different. I would say for you, Miguel, you absolutely should take it. Um because, well, you know, we've discussed privately the reasons why, but I think definitely, you know, this is a course that is really going to help you. And I, I, I would suggest that the investment for you is going to be worth it. I don't know, James, what do you think? I completely agree. And, uh, you know, for the guys that did ed either the Edge 1 or the Edge 2, there is discount available for joining us in Bogota, 4th to 7th of April, if you'd like. Um, and there is a discount for actually just doing the Edge 3. There, there is going to be different topics. The structure is different. We've gamified more of the approaching tasks. We're going to make it more. Uh, we're going to create that that accountability and that gamification. I've, I've been talking to Les a lot about this. And the biggest problem we have or the industry has is it's all very well when you're out in a boot camp with us, right? But it's create, it's getting guys to fall in love with social skills and getting guys to gamify being social. Because if mm. you want to talk to a social animal, you have to do this stuff with frequency, right? And the equation we always talk about is social freedom, the ability to speak to any other human being, plus social intelligence, the ability to read body language, seduce, be charming. You have to do this stuff with frequency. Our biggest jobs, our biggest tasks as coaches is to be able to create structures and plans that allow guys to do that when they're sitting in their rainy city on a Monday with a hangover and they mm. don't want to socialize because they're naturally introverted, right? So the Edge 3 is catering to that. We've gamified a load of tasks. We've got accountability systems in place. It's going to be shit hot. I would also argue, Miguel, not to call you out as a personal example, but actually to call you out as a personal example, you were one of the 75% of dudes who basically paid lip service to the Edge 2 by paying the money and showing up, which I respect. Don't get me wrong. That money was well spent on hookers and cocaine. But the problem was you didn't, act, you didn't make any of the content actionable. You didn't actually get out there and do the reps, right? And so it was all theoretical mind wank. And you also, you're a guy who absolutely, I think one of the problems with the edge too was we give this advice and then guys just want to pick and choose, you know, mm. which, which advice to take on board. And like, it's like, look, if we tell you to go and get your bloods done because we think you might have low testosterone, it's not really negotiable. If you, if you, if you, do, <laughs> there are even some guys who got their bloods done knew they were low testosterone because it came up as low testosterone and then didn't act on it. And it's like, fucking hell, what are you doing? Talk about self-sabotage, right? Testosterone is the lifeblood of masculinity. I don't, I don't want to make it 2D alpha or 2, 2D alpha like Jocko Willing. But if you know you're low testosterone, right, which is the Genghis Khan liquid juice for seeking women, ambition, going after it in life, earning money, conquering, dominating that very direct penetrative masculine energy. What the fuck are you doing? Right, yeah. we talk about playing an uphill battle, right? So, either guys 75% of the edge two, they just didn't take any action, or they took some action and they cherry picked the type of action they wanted to pick and they ignored most of what we told them to do. We gave them free access to the, one of the best sex coaches I've ever I've ever met. So, I mean, Mr. Yeah. Bonaparte, you know, the sleazy French sex coach, who's amazing. <laughs> he gave uh, so <laughs> <laughs> we, we gave these guys access to him for free. Mm. And none of them did the fucking course. And like, yeah. unless you look from an evolutionary perspective, right? The reason we include sexual shame in this is we all carry it to some degree. Myself, Troy, Bonaparte, everyone. It's something you constantly work on. If you're your only evolutionary prerogative, right? And we're animals is you're born, you reproduce, you die. If you have issues seeing yourself as a reproductive being or have issues seeing women, the opposite sex as reproductive beings, you have sexual shame. It's your job to fucking fix that, right? And we included that as part for free of the Edge course, and the guys didn't even want to do it. So mm -hmm. I, I do respect the guys that did the Edge too, but talk about victim mentality again. I think a lot of dudes in this industry, 
uh, and that follow this stuff, they just don't really want to win. They're so used to losing in life that they think, okay, well, any change is scary. Jonah Complex, fear of success. I'm going to pay lip service to this stuff, but not actually go balls to the wall. You can't be half a gangster. You know, one day you're going to die. Is that not enough motivation to stop wallowing in misery and negativity? Well, it's kind of a circular thing, isn't it? Because what we were realizing earlier in the year, and I think when we started working with Dave Lee and we were doing the, you know, talking about the TRT stuff, the testosterone and the other hormonal stuff, you know, like we were saying, well, you know, like why do these guys not have drive in the first place because and this is not just the edge this is other courses you know or other training programs you know we'll say to guys right do this stuff go and approach 20 goals a week and tell me the results and then we'll work through it and then there's always those excuses isn't there the next call oh you know the dog ate my homework i didn't have time to do it i approached three you know one of them was my mom the other one was my grandmother and then the other one was like auntie phyllis or whatever and um there's always these excuses and it's kind of like well look if you i mean surely if you want to you know, make something happen. If you want to get laid, if you want to be intimate with women, why aren't you going to do the one thing that is going to fucking make it more likely that you're going to get intimate with women, which is talk to a bunch of women and guys can't even do that. So then we started to come around to thinking, well, actually, maybe this is something to do with hormones, because if these guys were optimized in terms of testosterone, then you'd have more drive and you'd have more ambition and more sort of like, fuck it, right, I'm going to go out there and make this happen. And that's why we started banging on about the the hormone optimization <laughs> stuff. But then the problem is, you know, then you can take the, the horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So then, you know, we might be talking about that in the course, but if they're not going to do that or even properly address that, then they're still left at square one, which is they don't really have the motivation for the rest of it. And so nothing else really happens. Do you know what I mean? And that's why all of the advice in tandem, and it, it's not just TRT. I mean, somebody said before, I'm on TRT. It's helpful, but it's not everything. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like Dave Lee says, you have to meet the the treatment halfway, you know, you have to meet the medication halfway. So yeah, it's not just about sitting there injecting, you know, or doing whatever you're doing. And then that's it. You've also got to work out, you've got to, you know, we talk about learning combat sports, you've got to live that kind of lifestyle. So yeah, you've got to step up to the plate as well. But it is part of the picture. But the thing is, if guys are lacking motivation, that they can't even go out and talk to a few girls every week, then there really is a bigger problem here. And that's, I guess, what we're trying to solve in this course, right? Look, I, I think, um, absolutely. Look, you know, I can speak for myself and I'm sure, Troy, you can chip in if you feel like it. But the reason we do this job is because we're passionate about what we did because of what we do, because we continue to try and evolve and get better despite, you know, obvious flaws we all have. We're only human, right? But we came from a position of not pulling muscles to, you know, then getting some success. And then, you know, some days we'll get success, some days we won't. But it's a, it's a journey and a battle. We're, we're always on. That's why we're passionate about it. Hmm. One of the biggest, most freeing things you can do as a man um, is become socially more apt, right? So, more social freedom, the ability to speak to other human beings and have social intelligence, the ability to connect, right? Um, and if you focus on developing high level social skills, that takes the pressure off the need to think, right, I've got to bang this next chick, I've got to bang this next chick, I've got to bang this next chick. That comes from actually the rest of your life being a fucking mess and you needing the validation. What we're trying to now do, having been involved in this industry for a long time, is think about what, what's the holistic picture we can bring together where we're ticking off every fucking box, right? And that's the only way you're really going to self-actualize in this area. Um, mm -hmm. There's a guy called Spencer who just said he signed up. That's great. Yes. Well done, Thanks, for Spencer. Good stuff, bro. Welcome. So I'd, I'd, I'd understand guys going, oh, it's too expensive. But I'd understand if, if, if it was me and Les charging what we usually try and charge, which is you know, 10 grand for like three month course. This is 579 quid. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's cheaper than, it's cheaper than an orgy with, with a bunch of lady boys in Thailand. I mean, come on, why not? We've all had plenty of those. This is an interesting one. Warsaw, Warsaw versus Bogota was a city in Birdwise. I know what you're going to say and I know what I'm going to say. Well, but I'm not sure, man. I, I would be very much torn between those two, to be honest. I mean, although I suppose if I had a gun to my head, prob probably Warsaw, but I don't know. What do you think? I think for guys wanting to get a lot of easy sex, Bogota is way better. Yes. I think Warsaw has a lot of women overall because you've got lots of Ukrainians and uh, Belarusians and obviously Polish women, very feminine. But if you want to just charge around, go mental and go to a city of sin, Bogota all day long. You know? Well, yeah, and certainly from a training perspective, from getting used to this stuff, 100% Bogota, because the thing is that um, Warsaw has also got harder, as we've said. You know, people have, people have made this. Warsaw's not easy. Warsaw's like London 
Warsaw is like the new London, where if you're a high value guy and you're constantly working on yourself every day, getting better, um, and you're willing to really put the work in, and we're talking between 30 to 50 approaches probably per week, you mm. can do you can still live a, a good dating life. But if you're not willing to put the work in and you're not working on your value and you're doing the thing that a lot of guys do, which is like they go, oh, yeah, well, I'm like, I'm, I'm asking them how their life is. And they're in some shitty like management, you know, some sh 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 shitty like management job of, of some yeah. small thing they don't really give a fuck about. They don't have any ho hobbies or activities they're passionate about outside of that. Um, and they say to me, look, James, I'm just going to get the bird thing sorted first. And it's like a complete misunderstanding of how this stuff works, right? Mm. Women will jump yeah. into high value men's lifestyles, right? It's not, and, and this is the problem with the old school game guys. They, they made it all about game and the rest of their lives sucked. They didn't have any other value, right? You might yeah. be able to bang a girl as a one-off if you've got, if your life sucks and you've got good day game and you can run a date properly, but she's not going to jump into your reality. And let's be honest, 99% of guys, they might want to live the player lifestyle for a bit, but we, we all crave emotional connection. You well, want someone in your reality who worships you, right? She has to look up to you like you're a fucking hero. Well, Unless you have self-respect and you create a reality you're proud of, she yeah. ain't fucking respecting it. Well, the terrible irony of a lot of those, the day game guys, is that a lot of them actually do want to get married and settle down, you know, because they're all on the wife hunt. So ironically, it's not even that they're like trying to live, they're, they're trying to not live the player lifestyle. They're sort of like, they're doing that for a bit, but it's kind of a means to an end because they want to bring a girl into their reality and make her their wife. But the problem with that is their reality sucked because they never concentrated on the other fundamentals, right? Yeah, 100%. Brooding C was, on, Brooding C was in the comments earlier. No connection, by the way. But, you know, Brooding C was here before, so good to see No that. connection? No, con no, no connection to what I just said. But he, I'm just saying, coincidentally, he was in the chat. What was he saying? I don't know. I, did, I didn't. I missed the comments. Um was he talking uh, about? <laughs> talking about <laughs> Anyone who teaches men to be men will be a target. They want us to be feminine and harmless. And then got Guru says, I like skinny birds. Nice. Thanks for sharing, man. Uh, um, on a serious note, though, I don't know. And this isn't, again, this isn't some marketing ploy, but me and Les, we'll, we love self development. We'll definitely be around in some capacity, but we don't know what we're going to do. So, again, without pressurizing this, if you want to work with myself and Les, um, mm. Then the edge three, while it's still open, we've, we've got it open for another five days. That's it, and then it closes. Um, we may build another YouTube channel. We may, we may not. I don't know. We, we put a lot of work on it. it; just went at the blink of an eye. People are like, "Oh, well, you got the videos backed up. It's fine." No, we don't. We lost a thousand videos. Right? That was thousands of hours of time, tens or twenty or thirty thousands worth of pounds of filming done and editing. So no, mm. a lot of stuff got lost. I'm not one to dwell on it. Personally, I think the past is the past, whatever, get on with it. So I'm still alive. I'm still breathing. I, I, I'm lucky, you know, in, in a lot of ways. So I'll, we'll get on with stuff. But in terms of teaching this stuff directly to men, I don't know what me and Les will do. I don't know if we'll set up another channel. So this really is potentially the last chance to work with us. Five, seven, nine pounds for the Eds. That's all it is. 10-week course starting in February to take you from soy boy to fuck boy. Every fucking area covered, but a special Oh, we're back. <laughs> I think we're back. Are we back? Okay, hold on. I think the Matrix is trying to fuck with the stream. Senor Troy, are we back? I think we're back. I think the Matrix is trying to fuck with the stream, to be honest. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, 10-week course, it's everything you need to really become. It's not just the game stuff. That's part of it. The social skills is, is part of the, the string of the bow, but there's other stuff involved as well. Um, you know, really to try and think, right, how can we turn you into these men, you know, these 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 hero versions of yourself? And then you've got the Bogota boot camp, which will be a blast in April. So Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the thing with – you've got the 10-week course. You've got the video content, which is pre-filmed. You'll get access to all of that so well when you join and when we look when we open you'll get access to all of that you will also then get access to the live webinars this really is the the, the creme de la creme really the live webinars that we're going to be running we're going to be doing around two a week over the over the 10 week period myself james les plus a host of other experts on different areas including hormone optimization sex as we've said and different things fitness combat sports etc 
you get you get all of that, but you also get us in your pocket as a wingman because you'll get into a group chat with everybody else from from the edge, but you'll also get your own private groups with myself and Tusk and Les. And so then, if you've got questions, you know, these girls texted you, you don't know what to do next, blah blah blah. Then we're going to be there to help you. We're going to be supporting you for you know ten weeks, which is a, a decent amount of time to really ingrain some new habits. And then if you come on the boot camp as well then you're really going to accelerate your progress because that, that's really where the rubber meets the road. And there's no excuse because if you resonate with myself and Les's content uh, and you, you think we can help you, this is your chance because we compiled everything from all of those videos, all of those thousands of hours into this course that you need. Well, I think the, the thing other- with, like, I don't know about you. I mean, I think the thing with sort of like content creation and, and look, you've lost thousands of hours worth of videos and that's a fucking, you know, that's gutting and it's, you know, and it, it's like I a lot. Of- I think with the monkeys, it was but, all part. But, of the, it was part of the process. The, you know, well, the, point, the, process. Point, the point I was going to make though was it's almost like this. It's almost like this philosophical thing where, I, like, I, I find myself as I'm creating more and more content, the message becomes more and more refined. And the videos that I did from two years ago, or even a year ago, I mean, who gives a fuck, right? Because now the thinking is so much more advanced. So we can almost say, well, all of that stuff, it doesn't matter. Because actually, this is all you need. And here it is. And actually, all of it's in the edge because that is the current thinking, which is the culmination of all of those years of work and putting those videos together. Yes, exactly. And we've streamlined it. And we've, we've made it again. I keep banging on about this. But for me, £579, if I, if I, if I knew what I, yeah, <laughs> it's so worth like what we're going to give you in the edge, right? It's, and we've got these fucking experts from around the world, people like Bonaparte, Dave Lee doesn't even get out of bed for less than fucking five grand a fucking day. He get, he comes on and he gives fucking free webinars where you can ask him questions, right? So we're, we're trying to just think, right, how can we fucking really help you guys self-actualize? We're trying to do it. We're trying to do the best we can. It's all stuff we're living and ble- breathing as well. I personally work with Bonaparte. I personally work with Dave Lee, the fitness guy I work with. All of these guys I pay money to out of my own pocket because I am clients of theirs and students of theirs, right? Mm. So of this stuff it's not theoretical it's all the stuff we do to level up as men yeah Uh, yeah yeah i mean it's just look it's a shame the youtube channel's been taken down but fuck it 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 is what it is who cares let's just crack on i mean and whether me or no is building another channel i don't know i wouldn't bank on it it may happen it may not but if you want to work with myself les and troy as probably the final opportunity to do so as a tripod for now then this is the this the course the edge three so get on it yeah. It's, still open. it's open for another four days, and then you've got the Bogotá boot camp. Just sign up to the edge, and then Les will be in touch to discuss the Bogotá boot camp. As it stands, I believe we're going to take 10 guys. There's going to be five coaches, and we've sold five spaces. So there's five spaces remaining for Bogotá. Bogotá boot camp plus the edge, I believe, is three seven nine seven pounds Just the edge course is five seven nine pounds And if you break it down minute per minute, second by second, hour per hour, we are earning less than an African rice farmer's unemployed daughter to give you our time and our attention. That's we're, our passion. We're, we're, we're running less than one of those hookers in the walk-up on uh, Lyle Street that has to service those punters, uh, including Paul, every day. Max Paw says, please don't do a Tom Torero toss. Don't let it get you down. If he buys the edge, I won't. Uh, I won't <laughs> I won't off myself. Well, I mean, on that point, no plans to move to Medellin then, uh, Tusk? Medellin? No, not at the moment. Do a Tom Torero. Where have I gone? Uh, hold on one second. Oh, yeah, I'm back over here. Yeah, but uh, there's nothing else to rant and rave about other than the edge does shut in four days. There is a countdown timer. That's it done. Um, we've, I believe we've got, I don't know how many people we've got signed up, but it's going to be a fucking blast. And then obviously Bogota itself will be amazing as well. But help yourselves, gentlemen. Help yourselves. Help, help us help I mean, you. There's only really, I mean, what more can we say, really? I mean, this is genuinely the culmination of everything that we've learned this is the current thinking that we have that allows us to have you know very uh what would you call it expansive dating lives very prolific dating lives okay because we're doing this stuff and it's as simple as that and the reality is you've got a load of blokes you know still around from the old the old dating you know game days who are sort of teaching the same old stuff and yeah you know it has applications some of it's very good but it's not covering all the bases and you know they just don't have the depth of experience that we have, you know, they haven't been doing it as long. They haven't coached as many guys. They haven't been to as many places. Okay. And um, you need to get all of this stuff dialed in. Okay. Um, If particularly in 2024, I mean, things are only going to get tougher out there. You know, it's not going to get easier next year. It's not going to be like, Oh, thank fuck. You know, 2023 was bad, but 2024 is going to be a breeze. It's going to get harder as we go further in. 
hundred percent agree. Um, um, yeah, we're not trying to we're not trying to finagle it. Going right, learn these particular techniques to say to the birds. It's like soup up everything, right? Become this really masculine alpha version of yourself. That's what the course caters to. Um, yeah, it's going to be a blinder. Please get involved if you know what's good for you. Um, I'm not Absolutely. sure. What else, anything? Is there anything else to say? Well, not really. But I mean, if you want to see Tusk content, I mean, the way to see Tusk content will be to come on the webinars, right? Because, you know, we're going to be doing a bunch of these webinars. We're going to be doing about 20 webinars probably over that period, if not more, probably more. Um, you know, I mean, yeah. it's uh, it's a no brainer. Really. If you want to just see, to more recap, stuff, just to recap what the edge is. We, we've broken down all the key pillars which create your, which adds your sexual market value. We brought on experts to talk about their particular areas, so fitness, finance, the sexual shame, uh, the hormones, all that stuff. You can ask these guys questions. Those are webinars. You also have Zoom calls with myself, Troy, and Les, talking about the social skills part. You also have an actual task list to actually do to get out there and turn you into a social animal over 12 weeks, sorry, 10 weeks working on that equation of social freedom plus social intelligence. You also have one-on-one -on -one WhatsApp support where it's me, Troy, and Les on a group with just you to answer all your questions throughout the 10 weeks. It's literally the most complete fucking course for the lowest possible amount of money we could charge. It's everything there. It's nothing, right? We should be charging 5,797 for this, not 579 quid. I mean, it, but yeah. we're trying to make it accessible. And then if you want to absolutely blast at the end of end of the end of the course graduation ceremony where it's sex drugs and rock and roll without the rock and roll is you come out to bogota 4th to 7th of april with myself troy les and a couple of other coaches and you go fucking crazy with the day game with the night game you have a, a fuck ton of fun with a load of like-minded individuals meet some really cool guys go on loads of fucking dates and just have an absolute fucking terror i can't think of a better thing to be doing with my time than those two things um clearly these guys these guys can't either because they're not even buying the course they're sitting here watching us talk about the course without doing it so mm. guys you need to up your game basically get involved absolutely save yourselves no one else is going to do it for you and as i say things are only getting tougher in the dating marketplace from here on in 100 percent. and that's it really so what are your plans what are your plans now you're in a very darkened room yeah um, let me it's a light on it. It's just the the sunlight has faded oh, okay. on my on, the, on my uh, a bit like the sunlight has faded on the YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> That's a very, but, poetic, very poetic way of putting it. For clarity's sake, though, I mean the 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 edgy content that did get us banned from YouTube is absolutely in the edge course. So if you guys are nosy and want to know what those videos were, and they were quite racy, then they're in there. Oh, the other thing to add as well for those coming to, to, Bog, for, to Bogota is Bonaparte will be doing in April 4th to the 7th for the Edge Bootcamp. Bonaparte will also be there giving a live sex demo like he did in the last one. So he had five guys in a room watching him with a Colombian woman and he's demonstrating all the, all the keys to the kingdom to turn her on, make her squirt, all of the seduction stuff behind closed doors, uh, which was amazing. So he's going to be there doing that as well as an added bonus. So yeah, what can we say? We'll do a couple more streams just to raise awareness before the Edge 3 uh, comes to a close, you know, four days to go. And then that will be me off into the ether and uh, sayonara. So, yeah, Absolutely. nothing else to say, really. No, not really. Join the Edge now. Uh, edge 3 now. It's open at the moment. It's going to close at the weekend. So jump on board. If you've got any questions, you can email me, uh, troy at realtroyfrancis.com. And, and actually, if they do have questions for uh, about the edge or bogota or the edge plus bogota if you actually click on the link and get taken through to the web page you can click on the whatsapp or the telegram function and speak directly to us there if you want to ask yeah. us further questions very easily so yeah there is that and it's it's there's no obligation i mean if you want to if you want to flannel it you can but i mean i would i would at least encourage you i'm putting the chat the the sales page into the chat i would at least encourage you to have a look at the page because it will explain everything that we've said but it, it obviously it's, it's it's written in written form it probably goes into a bit more detail i would highly encourage you to at least have a look at the uh at the page you don't there's no obligation to buy but have a look at what we're offering here because you will see that it really really is you know stellar stuff i mean and nobody else is touching this stuff in the whole dating industry that's the other thing i mean all these other people you know they're basically talking about game kind of techniques that go back 50 10 15 20 years you know that don't really take into account the massive changes that have taken place in the dating market you know 
No, because gone are the days of, of, of pretending to be the high value man. Now you actually have to be the high value man. You have to dress well. You have to have your hormones optimized. You have to have good chat. You have to have a good job. You have to be living an interesting reality. You have to like yourself. You know, all yeah. these things that mm. people don't want to talk about because everyone wants, wants a fast buck. People don't like the message we're talking about here because it requires fucking work, right? Mm. But it is the only good fight there is to fight, which is self-actualization. Right? Well, self -actualization. Mark, Manson said, Mark Manson said, didn't he? You know, the only real dating advice is self-improvement, right? Yes, that's a great point. Fuck, now this... Hold on a second. Is this opening? I'm just trying to open this thing. Fuckers. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. The Edge 3. Um, next stream we go on, we can share a... We can screen share the page. But yeah, you've got issues to click what's up here. You get taken straight through to us to speak there. Um, okay. This, this guy's an idiot. If you don't stand for something or fall for anything, suddenly normalizing drug use. I don't even take drugs, man. We're not normalizing drug use. And I mean, drug use is normalized anyway. And I mean, you know, you're choosing to take a particularly uncharitable view on what's been said because you're trying to morally grandstand over everybody else or over us, which is just bollocks. I mean, by no, the no, end, I'll, I'll go out on a on a on a, on the on the occasional weekend and have a bit of fun, you know, extracurricular substances. Who gives a fuck? Doesn't mean that well, that's 90 what I said, that's what I said before. I mean, who gives a fuck? Yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't mean 90 percent of the time I'm not trying to live up, you know, level up myself and help other people, right? We genuinely enjoy helping other people. If that doesn't come through from the content we put out, um, and that doesn't come through from the message we try and uh produce, then you know, fuck yourselves. Um, and yes, we're not a charity. A lot of guys are like, Oh, well, why don't you give this stuff for free? For the record, just to recover old grounds. I put out thousands of hours of free content on YouTube where you could have taught yourself from scratch, albeit quite slowly. So there is no obligation to pay us. But we are also running a business. We've chosen to do something that we like to do where we're giving back to the people. And so, yes, sometimes we release products which cost fucking money. Live in the real world, right? You wouldn't walk into a fucking Louis Vuitton store or you wouldn't walk into an Apple store to buy an iPhone and just go, oh, no, can I have it for free? Fuck off. Like, mm. what, why is it that people are so stupid when it comes to figuring this stuff out? Maybe, unfortunately, we just attract the wrong people. I hope I'm wrong, but there we go. Rant over. Rant over. Well, look, we'll be doing probably a couple more of these this week, won't we? So I'm not sure what dates we've got yet. I mean, maybe we could do one tomorrow. I don't know. don't know how you feel about that. We'll discuss it afterwards. But, um, yeah, you know, we'll be, we'll be back and we'll be talking more about this stuff. Good idea. Yeah, good stuff. All right, guys, many thanks for tuning in. Watch out because The Matrix is about... Not John Matrix. Well, John Matrix as well, but The Matrix is about. So be careful with the content. Be Join careful the edge. before that gets cancelled as well. Yeah, and the edge might get taken down. I mean, we can't promise. I mean, obviously, anybody, once you're in, you're in, okay? Because we're going to have your, your email address. We're going to have your contact details. So we will make it, you know, it's, you're going to be okay. But, that you know, we, we don't know what's going to happen even with this course, even with my channel. So now really is the time to join because, you know, we are living in, I mean, look at Tusk. We are living in very dark times. He's had to move to a Russian village and live in a fucking farmhouse. Look. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, guys, you need to join the course. Join the course. And if you have any questions, um, best thing to do is open it on your mobile phone, the Edge link, and then you can click through and don't directly speak to us on whatsapp or telegram it's not an indian scammer on the other end of the phone called Pran, uh, pranjit just before you ask it is actually us it's either myself les or troy uh or just fucking man up and buy the course you've been watching our content for fuck knows how long if you haven't taken action on it um you know really respect all the support from guys that have watched my content over the years and, and resonate with it but if you're not actually out there doing the reps you're fucking wasting your own life you know, it's even worse than watching porn because at least you can jack off to porn, right? You're watching us talk to people with clothes on and not get laid, right? And I'm, I'm hopefully you're not masturbating to that, but if you are, well, you know, <laughs> God, God, forbid, God forbid what your next move is. But anyway, look, if you watch our content for a while, you resonate with it, but you haven't taken action or you're not where you want to be as a man who only lives one life, your odds of being alive jokingly calculated by scientists is one in 400 trillion to be born you are you really playing this character you're consciously born into to the best of your ability if you're not click on the link and sign up to the edge and we'll get you there indeed good stuff guys i think we've said all that needs to be said thanks for tuning in we'll see you again very soon bye bye Bye, Nora.